recently I was gone through some old newspaper articles and pictures of my grandfather and a lot of memories started flooding back of times I was with him as a kid. He was a city councilor and a state representative, um, as well as a factory worker his, his whole life. And he owned a little store that didn't make much money. Uh, he was a, a poor working man and he wanted to give back to his community. He was involved in politics. Um, and over time he got to more and more meet, uh, different people. I remember as a kid, I, I didn't really, realized the significance at the time. He was introducing me to people like Warren Rudman, uh, Gordon Humphrey, senators uh, from New Hampshire, Bob Smith, who I think at the time I met him was a congressman and became a senator. Uh, remember meeting John Sununu before he was governor and chief of staff for George H.W. Bush. Uh, was I, I, I don't even know if he had any uh, elective office. I seem to remember at, uh, one point my grandfather introduced me to him he was maybe running uh for some office a statewide office in new hampshire in the 1970s I, I just can't i just can't remember i was a kid i was uh at different times different points in my teens uh, you know i would go with my grandfather as he made rounds and he talked to people and, and i really appreciate a lot of things i learned from him and one of his biggest issues was aging uh, he was very concerned with uh, the elderly, with those who were retired, with uh, making sure that they were well taken care of. That included uh, Social Security, that included uh, Medicare and, and those kinds of things. That was a big issue for him. And I remember two things as I was sorting through some of these things, it just flooding back to me, memories of conversations of things he talked to me about that I fully didn't understand at the time. And uh, they are turning out to be very, very relevant in today's day and age. And this is probably 40, 40 plus years ago, 40, 50 years ago. One of his big hot button issues is we've got to put a lockbox around Social Security and around Medicare. We do not want Congress to be able to take that money and spend it and replace it with IOUs because the day is going to come if we go on that model where there won't be enough going into Medicare to adequately provide care for senior citizens. And he's right, because now there is all sorts of debates about really low Medicare reimbursement rates that really don't meet the needs and the cost of health care because the money just isn't there. And what he, he had said all those years ago, he was he was saying we need to have some kind of way to say that all the money that a worker pays to uh, Social Security and all the money that goes to Medicare goes into funds that are invested and, and build up and grow up over time so we have these funds that are adequate for forever into the future to fund uh, retirement, to fund Social Security, to fund Medicare so that there could be adequate cost of living increases. So, so new treatments that became available that are more costly that, that Medicare would be able to avail themselves of that. He was right. We just don't have the money because our government could not keep their hands off the money that workers paid in in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s even to this day there there it's just all rated and all that we have in social security and uh, medicare or ious from the government so he was right about that the other thing that he told me that i thought was really interesting at the time because he would talk to me at times when, when he you know evaluating politicians and talking about things and one thing that he he said is, is, you know, the goal is for us to come up with the uh, common good for the average person. What's in the best interest of, of the people that we serve? And that's got to be our focus as, as government leaders. And when we debate, and he had very good friends who were Democrats, the debate was about ideas and ways to provide for the benefit of that average citizen. And that the job of a politician was not to attack one another, but to persuade one another that your approach is better and to come up with a compromise in which everybody wins and will come up with a better 
situation when you have people from very different perspectives coming together to work for the common good. And he felt this hyper partisanship where, where the extremes kind of controlled the debate was going to be damaging. And he was very cautious of, about, about that. And, uh, one of the things that he liked about Ronald Reagan is, uh, he had read what he had wrote, written in gov as governor and said, you know, he, he kind of understands policies. And yes, he'll make jokes. He'll get his point across, but, but, his goal was to bring people together for a common solution for people. And, and I, one of my favorite uh, uh, Democrats, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, uh, was much the same way. He, he, he came from a certain perspective, and yet he was trying to come together uh, uh, and bring a consensus. So the debate was focused on what's, what was good for people. What was good for people was the center of focus. But when you get to this hyper partisanship where the extremes kind of control the debate, and just as he said, he said it's going it to get to the point where, where the, the focus isn't on the common good of the American citizen. The focus is going to be, I'm right, you're wrong, I control, my vision controls, your vision controls, and there'll be these endless battles back and forth where the true loser the true loser is the American citizen. And when it comes to in terms of healthcare, there are so many issues out there right now in healthcare, especially I see among where, where my heart is for small town and rural America, where, where rural Americans, small town Americans are losing when it comes to healthcare. They're losing in so many of these different things that are being debated by all these sides of the political spectrum. And yet there's getting to be, it's getting harder and harder and harder to live life uh, in a small town or rural environment in the United States. And so he's right about that. Um, that it was going to, you know, if, if we let the demagogues on both sides take over uh, the extremists, it, it's, it was going to be bad for, for the majority of Americans. And I think that's, you know, kind of where we are now. But one of the things that uh, I want to share about my grandfather, Ralph Blake, if you want to look him up, I don't know what's out there on the internet. You can Google him. He was a state representative in New Hampshire. He was a city councilor in Peabody, Massachusetts. He was on, I think it was called the National Council of Aging under Ronald Reagan. Uh, but one of the things that really struck me too is how much uh, having a heart and care and compassion and understanding and empathy for people, how much it can bring people together to solve problems. And, and I hope share in the comments below, maybe you've met somebody that you respect uh, that had the ability to bring people together. But I think a lot of the issues that we face in healthcare these days need to be solved by the caring, empathetic people that are working to bring people together. And I see that uh, there's a lot of networks and circles where I see many, many people that are, are working towards that end to work and to resolve these problems, to make the quality of life better for the aging, to make the quality of life better for those in rural and small town environments. And, and I think that's what we need more. I, I, I remember my grandfather, as a kid, he always had a pocket full of candy for the little kids in church. I, I remember how he would go to a diner or a bowling alley or someplace and just sit and talk to people and listen to their stories and encourage them. I, I remember how he would tell somebody that was struggling, I believe you can do it. I, I think you can do it and just point out all the wonderful things about them. Uh, it, it was a wonderful thing to see. And I do think we need more of that. I think we need more of that kind of caring, compassionate leadership uh, in, in our country. I, I think we need to focus on health care more and we need to find those people that are going to listen and be champions uh, for those voices and those people that aren't are heard very well. I, I appreciate you in, in the comments if Again, just comment, uh, like this video. Uh, I'm just trying to start conversations, trying to share what I know, want to provide some education and help 
to people, particularly my focus is, is on the terminally ill, uh, their caregivers and their families, and trying to provide help and resources for them because end of life is a tough time. It's a really tough time. And so a lot of what I'm trying to do is to really provide meaningful help for people going through that season of life. And so a lot of the videos that you're going to see uh, on this channel are directed in that way. But I do want to comment broader uh, on the healthcare system and different thoughts and feelings and, and, and ideas and just have a conversation. I think in a, in a future video, I'm going to share about my own interaction with the uh, healthcare system after I had my stroke and the story of my stroke and my recovery and what it's like to try when I was trying to recover from a stroke and heart surgery during uh, the worst of COVID and how how much that hindered uh, the, the care that I needed. And uh, I'll sh share that. I think at, at some point I'm going to share uh, in the future, near future, a video about what was it like to be a hospice nurse during the height of COVID and what kind of things did I see uh, in, in, that, in the pandemic? Um, because it, it was kind of an earth shattering uh, experience as, as a nurse. So I hope to see you next time. Again, uh, we really appreciate it if you like the video, if you comment. The biggest thing is to build this community, get people talking, get comments going. More than anything, I would love if you, you would comment on this video. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Again, this is Chris for Pastor Chris RN, and I hope we can all build beautiful sunsets for our loved ones together.